So I'm going to tell you about Germinal by Emile Zola. Uh, this was one of uh, Van Gogh's favorite books. He talks about it in his letters. Okay. Uh, and he, he was a big fan of Zola. I'm not really that big. Of, I'm not a very big fan of Zola. I've read a handful of his books, and they uh, I'll say they're not consistent. Um, well, I just read the intro on that one, and it said it was like part of a series, or part of a compilation. His whole uh, canon is a series. Hmm. It's it's all interconnected. So he wrote whatever it was, like sixty novels, and almost before he started writing any of them decided to create a world so all of the books have recurring characters um, it's generational so huh. you'll read a book where there's like a child and the next book the child's an adult Are they, they're fictional? all fictional um, yeah it's like this huge interconnected web of stories um, <clears throat> there's, I, I can't remember but there's like tons of these books um, some of them I would really liked other ones uh, can be kind of boring so this one is about um, uh, a coal mining town in a French village and one of the things about Zola is I feel like he's never really good about having very compelling characters um, but he writes very, very well and convincingly um, crowds and, and whole groups of characters and big settings. So the book starts off with, um, I can't pronounce his name, but I think it's Etienne. Etienne. Uh, he's a French guy and he's looking for work. And he comes to this, um, comes to this town and basically there's no work. Things go back and forth. And, finally manages to get a job in this coal mine and <clears throat> most of the book is highlighting the horrendous working conditions of the coal mine okay and he has like all of these great descriptions of like the, the shafts that go down <clears throat> that are like it's like a big monster with his mouth swallowing up the Frenchman <laughs> um, and a giant ant, like a big ant hill with these little people running through the mine. Was there a high mortality rate? Do you know? Was um, that was this book like purpose written? Yeah, I mean the, the, the book was a splash hit. Uh, cause as it goes along, like it, it was dangerous conditions, um, and also the, the people are like not getting paid enough to even live. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, not that this is true, but it, it's almost like an extension of like serfdom. Sure. Um, <clears throat> where you're just working for the company rather than a caught in this loop mm -hmm. where you, like you never you never get above water. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, there's like a revolt um, where like, they kind of band together to like get better working conditions. It's part of the book, um, but it's like so fascinating, like one point there's like this shaft that they have to go down and there's like a kind of like um, like a makeshift elevator or something not an elevator but the thing that like goes down the hole yeah and it's like 200 meters deep and one guy is like well, what happens if it breaks and the way that it's written is like the person just kind of shrugs and then we're like, stay, will die staying down there for a while yeah um there's horses that live under these coal mines, in the coal mine, and there's like a um, like a little area that they live in, and they talk about these horses that live their whole entire lives underground, never come up, just down there. It sounds miserable. <laughs> I'm sure they can't be healthy either. Oh my god! Like I'm sure they're just worked to death <clears throat> and swapped out. They're con like the character. The, the, the book is really. Kind of like crude and crass and vulgar. Um, a lot, a lot of the things that um, were a little, like almost a little taboo for 
novels at the time. Mm-hmm. So like the characters are like spitting black. Okay. So that there's like bodily fluids. Um, they're um, really uh, like they tell like dirty jokes. Um, and one thing is, um, I don't know if like, you ever read like read read a book and like a character will tell a joke and then a group of people in the room laugh. Mm-hmm. And so, like, in in the story, there's a funny joke. Yeah. Um, he's great about, like, nailing it. So... Like, make him funny outside of the story, too, or...? Yeah. Like, it, ha- it happens, like, throughout the whole book. So I'm going to have, like, a remark. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's just really good. It's not like you read it and it's like, I don't understand why these people are laughing. Yeah. Like, man, like, got that guy, mm-hmm. you know? So I just had a question actually. So if so, it's a. It's written in a like a made up, existence, right? But it, it closely parallels what was going on at the time in France. Um, they, they are like these historical novels. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Um, the main character, like the people, are based on reality, but like all the main characters are just fictional. Okay. But they're they're living in the, like the time. Gotcha. And he has um, he has like a whole handful of these books that are um, that kind of tackle uh, social issues. So um, he has a book um, I can't I can't pronounce it. Um, it's like lost some more or something. Apparently, it's like some um, French phrase that doesn't translate well. Um, anyway, it's about drinking. Okay. The whole book's like in a drinking den, <laughs> and you're just reading about like the rampant alcoholism going on at the time uh, he has a book called uh, The Belly of Paris mm-hmm. all about um, uh, prostitution well he has, he has he does have books on prostitution but this The Belly of Paris is um, about like restaurants huh. um, and it kind of has like, a whole, whole like landscape of High end food, all the way down to the most disgusting things, and, and how also they kind of intersect. Like France is known for their like delicious sauces, mm-hmm. and one of the reasons for that, which is, which is true, is covering up rotten meat. Like, uh, how, how do you extend meat? Gotcha. Farther, and you just kind of sauce it up. Just need to put a little hot sauce on there and yeah. keep it going. <laughs> yeah, red sauce and. Eat it up. Um, Gross. <laughs> yeah, he has a book called uh, uh, Nana, which is about a prostitute. And it's um, it's sort of like a recycled story that there's a lot of French books that like have it, but a prostitute that kind of goes up the social hierarchy mm-hmm. and is uh, in a game world. Um, that was one of the books that I didn't care for because I was hoping it was maybe more scandalous okay it really wasn't Hmm. um that's about it I mean I will say like is it fun to read for me it's always a really fast read okay um I I I get through his books like really really quickly um Oscar Wilde uh said that um uh Emile Zola is the kind of writer that uh you read so fast um that it's only by the end of it that you realize he's a terrible writer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wasn't there. All so right. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, leave a comment if you like. Uh, Germanol by uh, Zola. Thank you. Bye.